Hi, I'm totally not named Dan, but you can call me that if you want. And we're back to once again look at the contents of my golden egg. A deck that oh, I've been talking about the Godzilla characters a little bit lately, and this is the one I took to regionals. This is King Ghidorah, Emperor of the Cosmos. Now you'll see I was lucky enough to get the special alt art version, Tsukimusha's beautiful art on here. And I'm not totally against selling it because it's worth a fair amount. So if anyone has any offers, feel free to hit me up. But at the same time, I really do love this art. So I would not mind keeping it either. And it was great that I got a chance to play with it and to show it off like this. But to talk about the deck properly, I'm going to bring in my buddy, Brett from UK Versus. Hi, we on? Not, totally not named Dan. And I can second that the alt art Ghidorahs are absolutely gorgeous. As the first person to actually pull one of those guys, it is insanely detailed. I stuck mine under a microscope to actually see the different layers of foiling on them. And the way the Godot is lightning to clouds to sky to actual head foil patterns change. The creative team at UVS went absolutely ham making that car, these all art cards, some of the best that we've ever had. Nice, nice. And the alt art is part of why I chose specifically King Ghidorah to play, because I was thinking about Godzilla if I got the alt art for him. Because I think the Godzilla alt art is actually probably my favorite of the bunch, but King Ghidorah's got to be second. Yeah, God, the Godzilla is absolutely amazing. Mecha Godzilla Kiru is probably my favorite because of the cloud foiling pattern. It's the one that Richard ended up pulling. It's either Kiru or. Uh, Bio Menace, the foily pattern on the clouds is absolutely gorgeous and it really highlights the detail on there. Uh, my biggest disappointment just from you playing Ghidorah was that you have the golden egg but was not running Koenma's task. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about the Koenma's task combo before the event. I mean, I think I saw your video right as I'd finished building for it. Oh, I, don't, I can't remember where that came out. It's, what, it's one of our more successful videos. It was just the, the immediate combo my head went to because I could just break Koenma's task with this. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely want to do something with Koenma's task after seeing that. That's perfect. Uh, I ended up going with Godzilla because he's just big, scaly dabby. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I could see that a little as well. Ghidorah doesn't do enough with actions to be, be dabby. As much as he can remove yeah. the Koenma's task, he can't actually pick it up. That's the key, and that's why having one in the bin, having one that you can instantly remove, and then just being able to play the other two that you've got is just perfect yeah. for what King Ghidorah is kind of trying to do. But you went down a more controlly. I'm going to put you in a position where I can win the game, and you're going to stay in that position kind of deck, because we did do some testing the night before, which you did end up winning quite yeah. easily. Uh, game one, well, I was able to... It was pretty close. <laughs> it was 50-50 up until the point where you just checked really badly in the last game. No, I mean, you got four of those... Well, I'm trying to remember the name of the foundation now. You got four of the foundations that just keep dropping my attack power down to nothing. Tell you and... what, let's hop on over to the deck view so you can actually <laughs> see them. So that in particular is this Relentless Challenger right here, which has yeah. Deflect 2, so you can use it instead of a block to reduce 2 damage. But realistically, you almost never want to do that because, well, it's always giving you minus 1 to your opponent's attacks, plus 1 to yours. Over the course of 2 attacks, you're getting more out of it that way than you would if you just threw it into your pool. I mean, it was good testing for my Godzilla that during our test game, you got 4 of those out in the first 2 turns. But it yeah. did make for a very long game. I mean, versus Godzilla, it does less than versus anybody else because it just takes away your three, pretty much. Yeah. Whereas versus everyone else, that really, really reduces attack power. And though you think you're not really wanting to deflect two of it, it's a decent way to get it in your bin to build with Ghidorah if you want to. And if a mid-block kills you, you can deflect after block, so you can always mid-block yeah. and then reduce that damage down again and sort of like have that little bit of extra leeway of life. Deflect is very, very powerful, and it, I'm really glad to see it on Godzilla decks, and it has been getting a lot more play than I initially thought it would do. 
yeah, so it does have some nice niche uses, and one of those is very much against throws. You reduce the damage of a throw, you block a throw, and then you take two out of it again, at which point you can survive some pretty big throws with that. Especially as in our attack lineup, we're also running Sword of the Darkness Flame, which gives you plus two health for one of its effects. And I mean, you can lose a health, gain stun one, but you don't have to. You can just heal off it. So you can stop throws just enough to keep one of your heads and then keep going by healing back up. Yeah, looking at this, it's quite control inclined. You've got the food for initial speed, but you have also got the food, which is a great Godzilla counter because you get to kick City Rampage out, get rid of that 1-1. One, one. Yep. And yet you also get to heal from that as well as a lot of other cards people are trying to use or utilize for cut uh, in their builds or with action base. You can also use it on your own combined firepower and then use things, because I know you were using incubating on your own turns. Yep, to keep absolutely. Cycling. Incubating so just can... takes a thing out of my discard pile, lets me use the combined firepower again. And on top of that though, there are eight foundations in this deck, the Galactic Monster and the... Uh, Play well spoken. spoken, yep. Which yeah, I can play from outside the game. So sure, all my attacks get minus one speed, but then I can end my turn by just playing two, three foundations from outside the game at no cost to my hand size. Exactly. But I mean, the two really useful uses of food were one, it gives me health in the throw matchup, which was very important. Yeah. And two, really surprising one was between barrier shield and twisty surroundings, and even vile seizing. We have a fair amount of breaker in this deck. Yes. Which means opponents would go attack, get breakered, play a foundation, attack again. And I'd just say, right, remove that foundation from your card pool. You're not building at the end of this turn. And you've got that cheeky chronostasis trigger that once it gets into the discard, you can just break a four with the barrier shield whenever you feel like it. Oh, absolutely. Though so it's also really convenient to be able to block with the combined firepower to not go down an extra card in hand size when you block. Yeah, and uh, it's also great to have that immediate onboarding for the mirror because chronostasis trigger is also one of your biggest weaknesses so being able to run it yeah. yourself means yeah. you immediately set up for the mirror match exactly that's the real reason i'm running it i just put one in for the mirror for funsies because i was convinced i'd see more godzilla characters i only saw the mirror once and they were remarkably good at blocking the chronostasis trigger but eventually it just wore them down and it wasn't even that that killed but it was the so fact they it, constantly had to block that meant they were always committing out. That's kind of the thing behind it, isn't it? If you've got the Constellation Trigger coming in, they always have to hold a low and a high because you're never sending it as a mid. And it means that you can just overtax them on the zones. And because they have to keep holding these lows and highs, your Sword of Darkness Flames, your Dragon of Darkness Flames, and your Multiple Bites are less likely to be blocked because they're just holding off zone blocks for Constellation Trigger. And yeah, that's more or less how this works. The multiple bites, the Sword of the Darkness, Flame, the Vile Seizing are all basically just pokes. They all potentially stun your opponent out a little bit. Well, the Sword of the Darkness, Flame does, the Vile Seizing might, the multiple bites, it's tempting to block it, but if they block it, they'll probably have to commit a bit. Between the lot of them, though, that's 12 attacks that draw a card. You can just play three attacks and still have six in hand. Yeah. This is very much a... We string out a bunch of pokes, we see what happens. If they commit out, then they're vulnerable to the Dragon of the Darkness Flame. And Dragon of the Darkness Flame will just kill at basically any moment. So during Swiss, what was your toughest matchup and what cards kind of outperformed? What cards did better than you expected them to? So the toughest matchup was, I mean, it was interesting because I beat a recovery girl fairly okay. Took a while, but got there. And then the very following round was Richard Basingdale, Baz's recovery girl, which was the more throw-focused one, which took a lot more work and eventually was my one loss of the day. I mean, losing to someone that got top four with a deck they'd been working on for a long time is not too bad. And as a three-time ten-hander going up against recovery girl, it's going to be a bit of a slog, but... Yeah, three I'm times sure you gave as good as you got. But what yeah. cards in your deck outperformed? What cards were your MVPs? And what cards would you change if your regionals are coming up again next week? So MVP was very much the Dragon of the Darkness Flame as expected, because it does just come out of nowhere. It stuns down one, 
six speed naturally, so can't just be blocked easily. And then you discard three cards from hand because you don't care. It's at least 16 damage, maybe more. And then you plus it with a bunch of your other foundations. And yeah, it's very much the kill card of the deck. Food did a lot more work than I thought it would in terms of removing things from card pool. And likewise, just the constant having more foundations than you need. The outside the game foundations is really nice. But I mean, the thing that was really unexpectedly good in specifically the Recovery Girl matchup was Masterminding. Hmm. Masterminding was a last minute addition suggested by one of my local players who didn't actually read my character properly and therefore didn't realize I couldn't pick it up. I figured eh, it'll be fun. Let's put it in anyway, because it basically says anytime my opponent checks bad, they check worse for the rest of the game. It's a little bit win more in that regard but it helps yeah. keep the opponent in the position where you can lock them down and go for the kill. I think four is mildly excessive, but it worked for you. Four is mildly excessive, but at the same time, you can always remove that as cost for the character. You can always review that. And in a meta where most of the people were playing Godzilla, having that plus two low block was actually remarkably nice. Yeah, that's what, one of the big things is your block modifiers for low are fairly nice for what they are, and a lot of them are on cards that you don't mind kind of seeing in the bin, because like you said, Masterminding is one that you can just pick back up. Galactic Monster is one that you can build back in using Godot's abilities, or once you get rid of Incubating, you can get to remove them, so you can just yeah. sort of like keep cycling them. Yeah, definitely don't mind throwing an extra Incubating in the bin or a Galactic Monster in the bin. Masterminding, usually held in hand through the opponent's turn and then reviewed on mine, which means there's usually that plus two low there. But the interesting thing with that in the Recovery Girl matchup is there's one specific card from Elder Togoro's kit. I forget the actual name of it, but it's when you sacrifice a foundation, check a five. If successful, you gain a health. If you have Masterminding in hand, suddenly they have to pass every single one of those checks. Anytime they yeah. fail that check, I get Masterminding into my momentum. I get to oh, worsen yeah. their future checks. Exactly. And it's one of the things that you saw when Will Howard was running it in Shigaraki 3. You can also use things like Blue Flame Torment and other things to force your opponents in positions where you're going to get this masterminding out and just make it a lot worse. Oh, uh, absolutely. But speaking of the Elder to go kit, okay, I was surprised to see you didn't have a couple of Immortal Shapeshifters or Adaptable Anatomy for the throw matchup. Oh, is Adaptable Anatomy that if you completely block it deals no damage? Yeah, it is, yes. Yeah, I completely overlooked that. <laughs> I did not think about the throw matchup. Definitely a couple of those in here would have done good. Throws definitely were the main problem this deck faced. Because it can block really well, it can stop a whole load of attacks, and because of the breaker it doesn't actually need to stop that many attacks. That's the key. I mean, between your character's unique health situation and between the breakers, you're going to be in a very good position to deal with long strings attacks, force them into awkward positions. And as you said, no one was kind of prepared for the throws. Godzilla's kind of had built-in throw hate because they were running training with Gunhead, but no one was kind of prepared for a lot of throws coming. And it's quite easy to overlook cards like Adaptable Anatomy when no one has actually ever really run them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I was wanting to run throw hate, the first thing I would look at is protecting Yukina because it was so powerful back in old standard. But actually, that card doesn't really see any play currently. Possibly because things like Adaptable Anatomy, while they look worse on face, block with whatever from board rather than blocking from hand and needing you to discard that momentum. Uh, I think in particular, Yukina does see some play in Toga 3 because you get to just block with it, get rid of your momentum, and then incredible display it back up and go, yeah, I've got throw hate for days. Uh, okay. Your biggest issue with running Protecting Yukina is it's not on evil. Yeah, yeah, it probably isn't. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know what throw hate was available on evil. So that, now I do. Fair. Yeah. If we'd have been more awake on the Friday, we probably could have uh, noticed that little yeah. oversight. But you're using a lot of Ghidorah's uniqueness to your advantage. You've got the unmatched quickness. And you, I said, you've got the breakers there. So once you get to a low health total... And you're going, yeah, you can throw an attack at me, but it's going to do one, I'm going to heal back up, and I'm going to break you. Is that really worth it? it yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. To use a phrase that people started using ironically, but people have now just sort of integrated into um, vocabulary, your deck is kind of designed to overload your opponent's mental load. It's kind bit. of going, you need to deal with all these threats, and 
you also need to assess what I have in my hand because I'm very hard to kill, but my deck is designed to go, you're not that hard to kill. Yeah, yeah. I, even Godzilla is surprisingly not that hard to kill. It takes a like little said, bit more chipping away to get it into the danger zone, but I mean, 34 health, still not that much when you can throw down 20. Yeah, the Dragon of the Dance Flame is a great way to just get rid of Godzilla's health total, and then multiple bites sort of sits there going, as long as I've got a Dragon of the Dance Flame in my bin, I'm going to be hitting you for a third of your life total as well. Uh, I do like the addition of We Became More because of how Ghidorah works. It's something that Elder to Go has played. It's something that is a very, very cool. It, I was surprised to see it as your only zero diff. I didn't find I needed a lot of zero diffs. That's more than fair. How important were the golden deaths? Golden death? I mean, it's got two abilities. One is remove cards from the opponent's hand on their turn. It can, if they're trying to string out, do something there. It can hurt their ability to defend against your backswing, but realistically, it's there for the form. The form fishes you up an extra attack or two for your turn. That's fair. That's pretty much all it does. It just, you know, ups you to a seven or eight hander. So with it being such a big kind of control build that was using Ghidorah's abilities, why weren't you running things like true 100% power, which is just a free block for Ghidorah? And cards like Try Gravity Beam, which just lets you get rid of a card in your opponent's hand, and because you're going to be removing with Ghidorah, it just gets an additional two damage as well. Weirdly, I just did not find Try Gravity Beam very good in testing. It always seemed like it was too much cost for a surprisingly low amount of payoff, because you weren't ever going to go to five attacks, so it was only forcing one through, really. Yeah, well, to ask and what I mean, the test one is through for. is, I guess, your Dragon of the Darkness Flame, but yeah, I just never found the Tri Gravity Beam very effective. What um, was the other one again? True 100% power, the one that gets plus one speed for each of your rivals' foundations and plus one damage for each of your ready foundations and has a response. If you have 10 or less health when you play it as a block, it just passes. Yeah, so as an attack, that's not doing a lot of damage because you're wanting to spring out to commit your opponent out first. So you're probably not getting much of that plus damage. Uh, the plus damage is your foundation. Yeah, your ready foundation. Your yeah. So if you're stringing out to commit out your opponent's stuff, then when it comes down, you'll be committing out a fair amount for it. So you're not going to have too much of your stuff still ready, I wouldn't think. True, but you could always lead off with it and then make it a 13-9 with some combined firepowers to just put it into the sun. Yeah, just have the two separate threats, say you've got to block both of these. I see the logic there. I think there was also an element I didn't want to run any more two checks, but I'm not sure why not. Because the two check from Dragon of the Darkness Flame wasn't actually hurting me. Fair enough. It's just because we were talking about the utility of Ghidorah's ability, and that is kind of the one that you can do. Hmm. But that said, we are blocking on an almost guaranteed any time we draw barrier shield anyway. True, because you got the immediate speed reduction. Yeah. And I mean, you can even set the speed to minus one with the incubating, or lower with your unmatched quickness. Do we get to use Barrier Shield's other effect? I honestly forgot Barrier Shield had another effect. Yeah, so it's... Barrier Shield is is currently great because it can stop your opponent drawing cards for their turn. It's not something that's really seen at the minute, but it was quite good for like anti jero stuff. Yeah, I heard somebody else used it for that once during the day, but I could not tell you who. That's why I have to hunt them down, because I was running it in all my decks last year, just hoping to catch a Jiro out with Double Jab Pummel. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely see that being an incredibly game-defining move, yeah. if it comes up. It just never did for me. Twisty Surroundings, though, I just want to mention a quick ruling with that, because that's funny as hell. The Enhanced Discard 1 Momentum changed the zone in this attack. Playable by either player, playable while committed. Still only playable once per Enhanced step, so whoever yeah. plays it first gets it. Yeah. That it's the same with Maze Castle, which is what this is based off. Yeah. If it's played by either player, first person to get rid of it does it, and that is a kind of a game-changing aspect. Yeah, absolutely. So, if you've got momentum in the late game, you got that out, you kind of just want to dump stuff into it to stop your opponent using it sometimes. Yeah, and it's one of those things that you can also utilize with your Dragon of Darkness Flame, with your Chronostasis Trigger, with your Vile Seasons, you can go... 
okay, I'll make it a low and say if it deals damage, your opponent goes, okay, cool. You go, okay, so they got the low. I'll pitch your momentum, change it back to a mid. What are you going to do? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely there to help mess with them with the Chronostasis trigger and the Vial Seizing and just generally pressure the same zone a lot, make it difficult for them. The one thing I did notice in here is you don't really have any asset hate. No. I didn't see a lot of assets that were a problem. The only one was one of the Godzillas ran Battle Arena that uh, Ojiko and Bakugo and the like fight in in Season 2. Yeah. I forget the name of it, but it came down, it replaced Twisty Surrounding, but I didn't see the other Twisty Surroundings, and so they were just getting the extra momentum return from that, they were pushing through more checks from that, it was making my masterminding significantly worse, it was a Could bad time get, all around, yeah. but at the same time, it didn't actually swing the game in their favour enough to win, so. No, it's just, uh, I know you built the deck through testing and things like that, in my sideboard, I would definitely probably had a cheeky little villainous teamwork, because... It ignores progressive when you play it from outside your hand, which is very cool. Oh, nice. And it has enhanced just destroy a opponent's asset, gain health equal to its difficulty. So if you come across a cape... I see it. I yeah, see it. So if you come across a cape, you block the cape, you gain three, and your opponent goes, oh, that's not nice. So I want to be clear with this, though. My sideboard currently is this chronostasis trigger. <laughs> you know, there's no point in Ghidorah running an actual sideboard. Just shove it all as one-offs and two-offs in the main. You'll mill it eventually, and then you can just fish it up anytime you need. Were you ever tempted to run the mill strategy with Ghidorah? Oh, which mill strategy are we talking? Just slamming some final exam gut shots in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had that suggested to me, and yeah, I love final exam gut shot. I played it in Endeavor, the original Endeavor, in like set two, set three meta, and playing it once per turn, every turn, was never quite enough. So I figured with Ghidorah, it'd probably be about the same. So then again, this guy does block better. So my general yeah. thinking is that's probably not a way to win, but it's definitely a way to have fun. And it's definitely the funniest punch as far as I'm concerned. Oh, it definitely is. I, I have a lot of fun with it. And when I was winning Elder, which does a lot of the same stuff Ghidorah does, it was definitely on my list of cards that was just a, like a one-off. So are you going to be working on this and giving it some improvements for October? Or are you going to be going head first into Attack on Titan? I could consider working on this, but I have some ideas for a way to absolutely break Pony. Ooh. Because it turns out you could essentially run a 40-card deck come Attack on Titan. I guess you're going to have to make a video on that because I haven't heard that one. Yeah, yeah, that will definitely come out at some point. Um, Just a case of getting hold of the cards, really, because... Well, at time of recording, none of them are actually out. Re-releases this weekend, so... Yeah, I don't know if you've seen, but someone in Australia, uh, they've already started their pre-releases, and someone pulled a Beast Titan Chrome. Oh, nice. Yeah, very nice. Uh, well, I've got... I'm kind of out of questions. Is there anything else you wanted to do on the deck? No, I mean, I think we've talked about basically all the cards. And yeah. anything we haven't mentioned was covered when I was just covering the base deck. Oh. I think the only thing we didn't cover was Battle for Dominance, but it clears right. a card and draws you a card. It does not need explanation as to why it's there. Yeah. I guess the final thing is to say that King Ghidorah, I, I got two copies of the Challenger deck, like you do, to have four of every card. And so got two copies of King Ghidorah in general. So getting the third one meant I could then basically just use three copies of the card as my tokens for the heads. Technically, that's not legal. But yeah. most players thought it was cool, let me do it. There was one who specifically opted for the dice that I offered to use. And, you know, that was fine. But the rest of the time, I genuinely think running him as essentially a stacker character like that, really nice. He probably should, he probably honestly should have been, but I guess that makes your deck a little bit smaller. Uh, but as long as they're yeah. in a different colored sleeve, it, thematically it makes a lot more sense. And I think they just didn't want to do that because... They didn't want character stacking anymore. Yeah, and they, they didn't also want the aspect of you being able to put them in your deck when you've got things like the alt arts now, which aren't deck legal, but you, you could essentially run as your starting character. Yeah. It does also mean, because it uses counters rather than character cards, it does interact with a few more cards. But I looked at it, and basically what it comes yeah, down to enough. is you can play an attack where you remove a counter to gain two to speed. Uh, isn't there one from Muscular that you draw a card as well? I think it's you draw a card if you have three counters and then you remove a counter to get an additional draw. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Exchange an entire 10 health plus the buffer that comes with it 
for either two speed or a card. I am sure that Tim and Bill and the rest of the design team very carefully looked for if there was ways for him to gain counters because they did not want an immortal King Ghidorah floating around. Oh, they absolutely did. And apparently there's something like a five card combo in retro where you can do it. Ooh. But I don't know what that is. And I mean, certainly if you, do you can't up, do it in standard. If you do end up retiring Ghidorah, you can always make that retro deck. True, true. And I do need to make a new retro deck at some point. There you go. So, Spike, as he is, isn't cutting it. Coming soon, Immortal Ghidorah from uh, <laughs> Totally Not Named Dan. We'll see, it's possible. Well, thanks for having us, Dan. I'm going to head off me. and get on with my other stuff. Uh, hope to do some more collabing in the future, my friend. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd be very happy to have you again. Would be very happy to join you for something. Yeah, we'll definitely try and get something started out, and we'll definitely have to, uh, in October, meet up and get some games and get some interviews like I did with some of the other people there. Oh, absolutely. And anyone who's watching here, do head over to UK Versus. We have some very wild videos. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've mentioned a couple <laughs> of them here. I'll link those ones in the description down below when it comes to editing this video up. But, yeah, check out UK Versus in general. They've been doing some really cool stuff lately. I'm, try I'm trying some big swings with some very, very weird co uh, content, but it seems to be working out. But for now, see you. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.